just to start, this is not really a tutorial. This is more just a collection of thoughts and visualizations and some exercises that can help you with your corks. In this video, I want to help you get your corks stronger, but the emphasis of this video is on swings. I'm just trying to compile everything I know about corks basically and everything I think can be helpful, everything that's helped me over the years, and hopefully some of this will be helpful to some of you. So let's get started. So first, the setup. The setup is just as important to master as the actual trick itself. Some people have really good cork technique, but they're using the wrong setup, or the setup is just not matched to the technique they're using for the cork, so the cork just doesn't work out. And in cases like that, you can spend a lot of time wondering what's wrong with the cork, but really it's just the setup that needs a little bit of an adjustment. The most common setups and probably the most simple setups to use for swing throughs are either a J-step or a pivot step, or somewhere in between would be like a Euro step. Alright, so a quick word about each of the setups. J-step is the most common setup that people learn a cork from. It's a really good setup for learning your cork because it gives you a lot of momentum to use, but for swing throughs, I don't think it's the best one. And there's two reasons for that. Firstly, your cork will be stronger if you learn it with less momentum, because you'll learn to build momentum in the actual set of the cork. The second reason is because when you do a J-step, you introduce blocking into the mix. So blocking is when you have momentum, and then you lean against it so that you can go up higher. Uh, the problem with that for swings is because when you are blocking on your swing, it, it makes your muscle memory learn to lean against it. So then on your second cork, when you're not blocking anymore, you're landing straight down, you might end up traveling this way. Really, there's nothing wrong with the J-step itself. You just have to be aware that the second cork, you're not going to be blocking anymore, so you have to just straighten up. Um, so that might be a problem some people have. So a pivot step is a great setup because it doesn't give you momentum into it, so you have to build it all just in the cork itself. It also mimics the balance of the cork. On a cork, you're coming over this way and you just land, so the, the pivot is just on the spot, and then you just start it out and you're on balance. So. So then the Euro step, I think that might be the best one to use because the pivot step is great for training, but the Euro step gives you just a little bit more to the first cork. You don't really have to block too much, so it's just a good, comfortable setup to use all around. The main thing is just to, to practice your setup slowly and get it so it's nice and comfortable. So this could be a helpful little visualization. When you're going into your setup and you're going into your cork, imagine that your swing leg and your arms are literally just like a ball in a chain, like a big ball of weight on a chain. So if you have a chain with a weight on the end of it, you can't take jagged paths. You have to go nice and fluid. You don't want to have to like redirect your leg too much. You want to build the momentum nice and slowly, nice and smoothly. You just want to bring it around and slowly build the momentum so that you're just tapping yourself into the air at the very end. I need my glasses for this one. Because this is probably the most important point in this whole video. The most important thing for your corks, in my opinion, is you don't want to set for height. You want to set for flip. A lot of us have been taught this notion of setting, setting for height, waiting for the peak, and then pulling. And if you're not landing it, you have to wait even longer for height. I just, I'm against the idea that you have to wait in order to keep rising. You can pull your cork here and still throw your hips right over your head. You don't want height to be the difference between landing it and not landing it. You want to be able to land your cork even if you're feeling really tired at the end of the session. Another reason against height, height not being the answer, is because think about this, height, the vertical that you can get on a trick, it takes a long time and a lot of conditioning to actually increase your vertical. It is much harder to get higher vertical on a trick than it is to change your technique on a trick and just land it higher or twist sooner. Okay, so how do you set for flip? When you're here, you don't want to reach up. Don't think about going up, lean back. This is what's going to allow you to land your cork. Don't wait in the air. Waiting for the peak is more of an aesthetic thing, to make your tricks look really nice. Gymnasts, they wait for the peak and then pull their twist up there. As soon as you leave the ground, as soon as you go off your toes here, you want to pull in. So, there's no waiting for the peak. I'm open to debate on this idea. I think there's lots of different techniques for cork. This is just how I like to do it. But I say don't wait in the air. Once you get up to here, you get your height by standing as tall as you can. Try to get horizontal as high as you can. As if you're trying to jump onto a ledge or something. As soon as you pop off your toes, you give yourself that final bit of height. Just pull. 
this is a good little exercise you can do for your corks. Literally just think about your takeoff position right here, right like this, and just hold this. Just try to balance, try to hold it, and then as you're doing this, think about taking every muscle in every part of your body and just move it up. Just get your center of gravity as high as you can, because that's how you're going to get your height on your corks. Every cell in your body, just move it upwards. And your arm over top. This is your takeoff position. <sighs> Leaning backwards, of course. So you really just want to practice holding this position static. Your right arm is going to come right over top, look over your shoulder at the ground under you. That'll help you initiate flip. And just try to get up as tall as you can. One way you can do this is, when I say arch back, what you want to do is think about your spine, think about nice and high in your spine. That's where you want to arch. Don't bend at the hip down here. You want to go up, bend at the top of your back, right up here. So you get a lot of height. You want to be able to do the cork in a laid out position. So the key here is to use your hip. You want to set up to here, find this horizontal, and then get your hip into it. That's what's going to give you the power. Turn your hip over. When you turn your hip over, just try to throw your hips over your head. If you get enough flip, you can make it happen at any height. Try to do a low one. So now once you're in the air, there's two ways you can generate flip. All techniques fall somewhere between both, mixing the two of them. So there's a tuck-based flip or there's a whip-based. So a whip is the kind of flip that I want you to use for your corks. That's when you kick up you pull against your swing leg, so there's tension in your body and that tension pulls you around like a whiplash. So that's just like a whip back. And then on the other end, there's the tuck based kind of flip. So that's your classic back tuck. That's where you jump up, you don't pull away from the bottom half of your body as much, but instead you pull your bottom half up to your top half. So for the tuck based, you give yourself less flip on the takeoff but then you make your body smaller so the flip happens. So here's the back. Each kind of flip has its place. If you were going for like a cork high jump competition, you wouldn't want to pull back with your chest. You'd want to do exactly the opposite of what I'm telling you. You'd want to set with your chest nice and high. You'd want to tuck and you'd have very little flip momentum, but your cork would be up here. And it would still work out because you'd make your body smaller in the air. But for swing throughs, I think getting as much flip momentum as you can to allow you to do it laid out will help you do more swing throughs. It'll also help you add more twists in the future. So when you set, you really want to feel the tension in your body. You want to swing your leg up and then pull away from it. So the next concept I really want to talk about is, I'm going to call it snapping into your twist. I'm going to use the word snap because it's just like a front snap kick, where you know the position you want to get into, you get yourself ready, and then you snap. You snap your body into the right position. So that's the same thing you want to do in your twist. Get your chest into the position, you turn your hip. So picture, as you do your cork, your body's going to get to this angle eventually, right? I want you to put your chest there right away. Dig into the flip. Take your chest and put it into the flip. That's digging. That's putting your chest where you want it to be. So if you dig, you get your chest in the right position, then your arms just have to help you wrap.
If you feel like you're pulling your twist and you're pulling as hard as you can, you're squeezed and you're not getting around, it may be that you pulled too early and you didn't swing your arms around enough to gain torque. Um, that's called riding the barrel. You want to bring your arms all the way around and then pull and you'll get a lot more twist. So people get spooked and they try to pull early. What you really want to do is wait longer. So another quick little tip, but very important. When you're here and you pull, so you have a straight line like this from your toe up to your chest. This straight line here actually becomes your twist axis. You're actually going to twist around this axis. If you pick this leg, make that your twist axis, and just let your other leg come in front of it or bring your other leg to it, it's much easier because you don't have to try to pull your legs together and then the, your other leg is free to open up and eagle so you can swing. One twist at the end of the day is not that much. To get around one twist, I mean, your set is like a quarter of a twist to a third of a twist. Then you pull, and then three quarters of the way through the twist, you're going to eagle. So you're only really twisting for like half a twist. It's not that much. It's like, and then open, and that's it. All right, so now you want to land your core. And the landing position for swing theories is called the eagle. So this is the eagle right here. It's when your arms are pulled back, your swing leg is pulled back, and you're ready to, to land and just swing them through into the next trick. People think the eagle is about gaining power. It's not really. When you open up, you actually cancel out a lot of your flip. The eagle is about getting into the right position to swing. It's all positional. So when you're three quarters of the way through your flip, when you're about here, and you can see the floor this way, that's when you want to open up for your eagle. And then your foot takes a direct path to the floor, and you straighten out. You can arch this way into it, but basically you just want to cut your body to the floor as fast as you can. Film yourself from straight on. Think about a line on the floor or find a line on the floor. And when you're thinking about your legs, you're going to kick diagonal, right? So your foot is going to be on this side of the line. You want to eagle with your foot still on this side of the line, and you want to kick back parallel with the line. You want to kick this way and come out of it this way. If you come around this much, you've gone too far. All right, so just one final tip. Um, I talk a lot about gaining flip over the top but sometimes you need a little more flat spin. So I want to give you a little tip for initiating or getting more flat spin. When you set and you're coming up this way, you don't just want to go straight over and down the other side. Think about coming up and then reaching. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270. Reach over here, bring your chest here. <sighs> and that'll kind of help throw you on this angle here instead of leaving you committing over the top. <laughs> Alright, so now I just want to give you guys a few extra tips that might help with your quotes at your next session. First of all, go and get yourself a camera. Cameras are cheap nowadays. You can get a really bad camera for really cheap, but it doesn't matter. As long as you can record yourself and see what you're doing, it's going to help a lot. Use slow motion when you're studying. Um, slow down your own tricks and also the samplers that you're watching. Sometimes you can do that right in YouTube, sometimes you have to download the video. Do it. It really helps. If you think you're already catching everything that's going on in the video, that's great. Slow it down and watch it again and you'll catch just as, you'll, you'll catch twice the amount of stuff. Also, if you're a, a, a right side tricker, if you're uh, just studying someone who tricks the opposite way of you, download their sampler and flip it. Don't make yourself do more work than you have to. Just flip it so you can watch it nice and easy and just see what's going on. So, here's a quick little tip. Of course you should study the most powerful corks you can find, the best corks on YouTube. But, sometimes it can help to study a really shitty cork. Um, and what I mean by this is watch someone do a chain of like 16 corks and analyze the last cork. The one where they had no momentum, their balance was off, all of that. So why should you analyze that one? Because they still landed it. It still worked. Why is it that you use a J-step and all your momentum and you can't land a cork, but they can do a cork out of 15 corks and they're off balance and all that? What is it that's making their cork work? Um, it becomes a lot easier to see when you analyze the corks where some of their technique is failing. Um, yeah. Uh, so another quick little tip. 
when you're watching someone do their corks, or any trick for that matter, and it looks like they're just flying, it looks like they're really floating, the tricks are happening up here, pay attention to exactly when their foot leaves the ground. Because chances are they're not really getting that much height more than you are. They're standing up really tall, their foot is still touching the floor, and then they just tap themselves into the air, and then they catch themselves really high again. They're just, the cork is starting up here. You might think that they're jumping when they're at this point with their arms, but really they're waiting, 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 and they're jumping here. So that's just like that teeter-totter motion. You pull your arms in as your leg goes up. Boom! Okay. So, a quick note about your arms. Your arms are very important, but your chest is the deal breaker. How much do your arms weigh, and how much does your chest weigh? You're trying to get the heaviest part of your body and flip it. So your arms help you, but they don't really have that much say, because they're not that heavy. So, basically, if your chest is in the wrong position, it doesn't matter what you do with your arms, it's not going to work. But if your chest is in the right position, it doesn't matter what you do with your arms, it's going to work. So it's about your chest. Your arms just help a little bit. If it's hard, it just means one of your limbs is in the wrong place. That's it. That's all it means. So, final piece of advice. Every time you make an adjustment, or any time someone tells you you have to do something in your cork, there's really two things that have to happen. Normally when you try to make an adjustment, it, may, it messes everything up. That's because your cork is balanced in a certain way, and then when you mess with one part of the equation, it throws everything else off. Every, every adjustment requires two adjustments. Be optimistic on your tricks. If someone tells you to do something and it doesn't work, well, it's just because it's clashing with your current technique. You just have to mess with it a little bit. I think that's about it. Really just take some of these tips. If something makes sense, just pick one tip and go to your session and just try it. Try it like 20 or 30 times, 5 to 10 times, whatever works for you, and just have faith that you're going to get it. I really hope this tutorial or this collection of ideas is able to help some of you. Shoot me an email if you have any questions or find me on Facebook. I'd be happy to help people out and give you some individual tips on your cork. Um, if you're really serious about corks and you want to set up a, a, a private lesson over Skype or something like that, let's do it. I'm really, I really want to help people out. Uh, if you live around Toronto, come to the Monkey Bowl every Sunday night from 6 to 10. I'm organizing uh, trick sessions here just during the open gym. It's the price of the open gym, so you can come in and train with us. And I'm here to give tips and to help people out. So come to the gym, find me, and let's trick. Good luck at your next session.